Vico Deck Tech 150. Uh, the system power control module is included. And in order to turn on the power to the system, the 24 volt DC supply, uh, first uh, disable the emergency switch and then press the green button. The power supply to the stage and the rest of the profiler turns on. It's a Dell PC with the Windows XP Professional Operating System that operates the system. The system operating system and the application software are pre-installed. The dust cover, the shield is not bolted to anything, but there is a ground wire attached to it. It has to be lifted up straight in order to access the system at the time of installation. So the first screen comes up. Now if there is no uh, once pressing control alt delete. The Windows login appears. There is no password here. Just click OK. For operational security, if it is desired, a password can be entered here. As soon as the system boots up, it comes up with the first screen. The application deck tag here is to be clicked on, the icon which appears here. And the window pops up with the where the software enabling and the application initializes the stage initially, starts with updating the firmware. It's customary to install the stylus profiler on a vibration isolation table and the PC on a separate table in order to isolate the stylus profiler from the vibrations due to any fans in the fan and the computer power supply. Now the initialization of the application is happening. So the system, the first window that appears on the system uh, comes up with a, the last recipe that was enabled. Now this is the stage camera view and the stylus, the reticle, the alignment reticle here and the, and the cursor. On the right hand side, this is for the stage movement. Uh, by clicking on these buttons, we can move the stage out by clicking on the right hand side here. So once the stage comes forward, you can load the sample. Now after loading the sample, click on the button on the left, the stage goes in. The table is about 8 inch in diameter and this is a Z axis knob to adjust the leveling. And there are motors and encoders on both X and Y axis. There is also provision for connecting a vacuum to the chuck so that it can hold the sample and the vacuum can be enabled from this closet switch here.
all the connections for the profiler are to be made on the back side of the system. There is an amp connector here which is the main power supply uh, control and the power module the power supply is here 24 volts DC and there is a 9 pin serial port connector that goes to the PC and there are two USB connections one right under the 9 pin connector and the second one here and this one goes to the stage control and all these USB connections are to be connected to the PC. Both the mouse and the keyboard are also serial USB connectors. So here is the various menu items and I and the buttons here on this computer's monitor so to run a scan we have to click on either scan or scan here menu items and these are the tower up and tower down so these buttons as soon as the sample's top surface touches the stylus strip the stage initialization and after the initialization there is illumination up and down buttons here enable to increase the illumination and the camera zoom and the focus knobs are over here there are lock screws for the zoom button I'm increasing and decreasing the zoom you can watch it and then the focus knob is on the, all the way at the down you can focus it also for coarse focus there is another knob here and by loosening the set screw there, this can go up and down as well. The next two buttons are release stylus and tower down to null position. So I'm clicking that, the stylus null position will be in it. Found. And then I'm going to run a small scan here. Before that, let me look at the program itself. There's a standard scan, and the location is 00. zero. I have the, the first location. And the scan length is set at, at about 850 microns. Scan duration 20 seconds and the resolution will be 0.142 micrometers. And the profile selected is both up down and the radius of the stylus is 0.2 microns. And the right and the, the reference and the measure cursors are the right and left cursors are positioned at 150 micrometers and 750 micrometers. I've selected width about 20 microns. And the display range is selected auto. So once all these parameters are set, 
If necessary, the an analytical parameters also can be enabled if necessary. So I'm going back to the sample positioning window, which is the first window. I'm running a scan here. So after the null position is selected, the scan will actually start once it, the stylus reaches the zero zero location. Okay. So this is the display of the profile of the first can. So the cursors can be moved, the reference, the red one, and the green one, the measure cursor. And we can level it in order to get a better measurement. So I have a VLSI standard, which is about 9,500 angstroms step height. So I see here 949.37 as the vertical distance between the re reference and the measurement cursor. And this, the units are in nanometers. And or which is equal to 9,493.7 angstroms. So there are various functions available here, such as histogram. And we can print the scan if there is a printer hooked up to this. This system comes with a with the following installed options. Uh, in order to go to that, click on the help and about menu item. And this is the original software, DECTAG version 9.3. And the install options, the stylus tip that is installed is one millimeter vertical range stylus. That means a maximum step height of even at one millimeter could be measured using this tip. It's also enabled for 3D mapping, data stitching, and has ISO 11562 filter, and the end light, and step detection is possible, and also stress measurement is possible. We have a detailed manual that will be included on a DVD in order to reduce the carbon footprint. So the, the user should print a manual if necessary. Otherwise, there's a reference manual even on the system as a PDF. So the manual is available to the operator anytime to refer at any point of time. So clicking on the analytical functions in this screen, there are different parameters for roughness, waviness, height, geometry. The, pro the parameters are defined in the user's manual. And depending on the customer's requirement, they can select to compute these parameters. For example, I'm selecting these for now and demonstrate how to how the system will compute them. So all the parameters are computed and are, the results are shown here.
Okay, this is a system without the shield on it. Uh, the, the focus knob for the camera is here. The very first knob. And this is the zoom. Let's see. Okay, the zoom and the focus. By opening the set screw on the other side, there's one more knob here which can be moved up and down to further get a fine focus or a coarse focus. The camera is attached to the system using a USB connector. The, the lamp illuminator, which is an LED, is on the left hand side here and the, the reflection mirror here which the 45 degrees mirror which reflects the image into the camera is on this side. This, these two knobs are to be adjusted when By moving the upper knob, we can move the, the image left and right, and the lower knob, we can move the image up and down. So in order to get a 3D profile, we have to select a program. which is a 3D program and once you select it and here I have an example the bid test 3D And then switch to the scan routine and in the scan type which is in this window, in the scan parameters window, we have to select map scan to get a 3D profile. A standard scan will give a 2D profile. Select a map scan and go to the button map and here we have to select Y extent where the profiler move in Y axis direction uh, for the distance set up here in micrometers and it will scan number of profiles either 10 or if we select example 10 profiles for a distance of 100 microns and we apply it so the resolution will be 11 micrometers per profile. Uh, to take a quick map of this, I'm selecting five profiles and it will be 24 microns per profile. And the image resolution can be selected either 10% or 50% or 100%. And once we select this, I'm going to run a to get a 3D profile, you have to run the auto program. Once we start it, the mapping will start. So it's going to be the first scan at x0 microns and y0 microns. So each scan here will take about 20 seconds. That's the first scan, and now it's going to be the second profile at y is equal to 24 microns.
So the second one is ended. So like this, it's going to do five profiles. So the white distance advanced to 96 microns. So that was the last profile. Now once the profile is done, you can save it, save the data the data file and giving it a name BIT3D8. So these are all the profiles taken before. So once we saved it as a bit test 3D profile, we can launch the vision software and once we launch it the program the data is uh, uploaded to this application and now we can see a 3D plot. So that's the 3D plot we just mapped. So there are various options available in the buttons can custom analysis options and displays, units option, change the units if necessary, and a 2D analysis also is possible to see. So the vision software here enables us to look at 3D profile and also do the manipulations on the image to verify the profile. I'm going to say something. So the tower up, the tower moves for the z-axis motion and there are two sensors for the lower limit and the upper limit there's a y-axis and x-axis motors here and the actual profiling is done by dragging the stage on the smooth table here